Now that absolutely sucks. Hey folks, we're back with another video, and today we're going to be working on a 2018 RockShox Pike RCT3 B1 chassis fork. We're going to be doing a full service lowers, air spring, and damper. Now, in this fork, I have a Charger 2.0 damper, which is stock, but I have a C1 air spring, which is not stock. That's an upgrade. You might have the old air spring if you have a B1 chassis, all right? Another thing I'm going to work on is replacing the entire upper assembly. A couple of months back, I was at a bike park and I happened to notice oil building up on the outside of my stanchion only to find that I have a pretty deep scratch over here. All right. Now, this is in the middle of the travel. It's about an inch, inch and a half long, maybe even longer. I can't put my finger down there to feel it, but it is deep. You could easily hear that, right? You could even see the oil still, even though I wiped it. Technically, you can fix something like this, but when it's in the middle of the stanchion, I don't know, man, that's a tough one. If it's a deep enough, like this one, uh, groove and long, vertical especially, think about it, you're constantly in this area when you're riding of travel, right? And if you don't fix it perfectly or real well, get a real smooth round finish, well, you're constantly going to be seeping oil out of your wipers, right? There is going to be a gas. You might not be able to, or a space in the wiper and the stanchion. You might not be able to see it, but it will be there, right? When you have scratches, which are typically on the sides or higher, right? Those are a little bit easier to deal with uh, because you don't spend all that much time in this travel area, right? But here, this is, I'd say, probably the better part of 80% where a, where, where a shock sits, okay? Especially when you're sitting down. And sag alone is going to bring me a solid inch and a half, or at least an inch, right? So I happen to come across a really good deal on an upper assembly, so I'm just going to swap it out. You won't have to do that, but ultimately everything else that we're going to go over in this video as far as 200 hours service for this fork will apply if you have this version of RockShox fork. So let's go over the parts and the tools needed for the job. As for parts, we will be needing a 200 hour seal kit. So for a B1 chassis, 00.4315.032.646, this will have everything you need for the stock B1 chassis. I have a C1 air spring and I need to get the seals for the C1 air spring. Ultimately, the cheapest way you could do it is just buy the C1 air spring. RockShox doesn't sell just the seals. So much for sustainability. I swear if I hear another company ever mention sustainability again. Ugh. Anyway, so I'll be needing this because I do have the C1 air spring. But if you don't have the C1 air spring on yours, everything you need will be in the 200 hour kit. Okay. As for greases and oil. So uh, I had learned through a, a YouTuber, subscriber, um, Bob, this one goes out to you, that Depending on which oil you use will be dependent on what grease you will use in the fork, okay? So RockShox is made to move to Maxima Plush. And my understanding is that if you use Maxima Plush oil, you need to use Saran Butter. Can't use Dynamic Grease. Apparently Dynamic Grease and the Maxima Plush oil doesn't mix all that well, okay? If you are using RockShox oils, the old RockShox oils, then you could use the dynamic grease inside the fork, all right? Now, one thing I also want to mention is <laughs> RockShox changed their mixture for their original oils, right? They used to come as a bright red color. Now it's a lot darker. So if you have it to come across bottles that are three weight RockShox um, that look very, very red, that's normal, okay? That's how they've sold it for years. This transition, I wanna say, happened about two years ago, okay? So if you see dark oil, if you, let's say you buy off Amazon, you get a, a, a bottle of dark oil, three weight RockShox oil, totally normal. They changed the formula, they added some stuff to make it a little bit more slick inside, and that was the result. At least that's what I was told from RockShox, okay? Outside of that, that's all we really need for parts. So let's get on to the tools. As for tools, we're going to break it out into three sections, 50 hour service, air spring, and damper. All right. We're going to start off with the 50 hour service, which is nothing more than doing the lowers. First off, 
In either case, you're going to need a pen and a paper to write down your settings, your compression settings, air settings, rebound settings, etc. Right? An air pump in order to be able to slowly take out air and put in air when you're done, right? To bring it back to the way it was. So next we will be removing the uh, rebound knob. You're going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen for that. And then we remove the bolts that hold the lowers, which is a five millimeter Allen. From there, we're going to separate the lowers. We're going to need a lever of some sort. I use this tire lever from Ice Tools. It works great uh, in order to take out the wipers, right? When you take out the wipers, a pick comes in handy in order to take out the foam rings. From there, we're going to clean the inside of the boots. To clean the inside of the boots, you need paper towel, alcohol, dowels, and a rubber band. You'll see why the rubber band. All right, so then let's say you're only doing the 50 hours. We need to put everything back together, right? We need to put in the new foam rings, which you're going to do with your fingers, but then you're going to need some kind of tool to tap in or press in the wipers again, right? So a lot of people make these now. Make sure that you get it, that you buy one that is for the size of your stanchion. So this is a pike fork, 35 millimeter stanchions, 35 millimeter wiper. So you're going to need this and you might need a mallet to tap it in there in case it doesn't seat. So from there, we will be in, you'll need 10 millimeter syringe or a syringe that allows you to put up to 10 millimeters of oil on each side of the boot. Also, you're gonna get a compression washer uh, that you're gonna need to replace on one of your bolts, on your air spring bolt in this case. So a pick comes in handy to take the old one out. And sometimes you, sometimes, this is not a necessity, you might need a plier in order to wedge it out of there because sometimes it's pretty tight. So that's pretty much all the tools you need for the 50 hour service. Next, let's get into the air spring. As for the air spring, not much is needed. A 90 degree preferred retaining clip plier to take out the retaining clip. I had built this tool, cost a couple of bucks, nothing more than an M8 screw with some fender washers and a bolt with a lock washer. This helps remove the air spring, especially if there's negative pressure, it just helps get it out of here. You got more leverage, basically. I use it for both the damper to bleed and the air spring to remove. So this comes in handy. Highly recommend you go put one together. You can get everything you need at your local hardware store. You're gonna need a pick to remove a couple of seals. You're gonna need a eight millimeter and a, an eight millimeter Allen and a 12 millimeter wrench in order to separate the uh, main bolt from the shaft so you could change out the piston in this case right since we're changing the c1 head and then you need a 12 millimeter crow's foot in order to torque it down you will need loctite in order to finish down the torque paper towel and alcohol and for the damper so two millimeter to take out the dial bolt on top for both the air spring, I forgot to mention this for the air spring, both air spring and damper are fully removable. You're gonna need a cassette tool, okay? So a regular cassette tool will remove them. From there, we are going to remove the seal head, 23 millimeter wrench, 23 millimeter crow's foot to torque it back down. You're gonna need a T10, a Torx 10 bit, in order to take out the bleed screw. Pick for a seal. This is my tool again. I use this to bleed you'll see during the bleed process it just makes life easier when bleeding you will need a syringe right so any regular syringe uh, that fits uh, SRAM brakes for instance will work over here so I just have this one as a dedicated one for uh, performing or doing this work for or bleeding rock shocks shocks torque wrench that goes for everything you're gonna need a torque wrench for your 50 hour your spring air spring and your damper you're going to need a container in order to put the oil from within the damper, towel, and alcohol. When it comes to working on a fork, as always, make sure the fork is clean, especially in the steer tube over here. You want to make sure there's no mud pack up, no dry mud, because the last thing you want is, as you're putting everything together, mud to slip out and fall into the lower boots. Also clean the bottom of the boots around the bolts over here as best you can prior to opening up everything. First, we're gonna start off with writing down our settings. There we go. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna take off this cap. And we're gonna put in our gauge. Wow, 58, that's way, 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 way low. 
at least for me. So something's off with that one, but make sure to write yours down. All right. So we know I'm in a fully open position. Then we're going to count our low speed compression. What am I on this thing? One, two, three, four, five, five. Five clicks of low speed compression. And I'm going to count my rebound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. All right. Next, let's start opening her up. First, we're going to start off with taking the air out of the chamber. All right. Do this slowly, very slowly. Don't try and take it all out one shot. Just let it slowly seep through so it comes out of both chambers. Ooh, stinky. So, in order to be sure what you can do is stand it up and press down on the top. I should have put the camera higher. You're not going to be able to see this, are you? Until it goes all the way down. And let go. And you can do that one more time. All right, just like that, put it in, compress it, let go, and let, let it come up. In fact, let me try that one more time. Yep. There you go. All right. Next, we grab a two and a half Allen, and we take out the screw, not completely take it out, but loosen the screw on the rebound knob, just enough where we could take the knob out. Just like that, and put it on the side. For the bolts, we're going to grab a five millimeter ratchet and we are going to loosen them. We're not going to fully take them out. That goes for each one. The reason we're not going to fully take them out is we're going to take them out about three full turns. Two, three, right? One, two, three. Then we're going to take a mallet and we're going to tap them. The whole idea is to separate the shaft from the actual bolts themselves, from the boot itself, okay? Just take that, tap it. Tap, that one came out. Something tells me this one didn't come out. Yep, that one just came out. Should have just come out, right? Now we could take out the bolts and find out if the shaft separated from the lower boots. Washer, crush washer, don't forget that. The other ones over here came out with the screw, right? So in the bottom of each bolt, you're gonna have crush washers. Make sure they're on the screws. That on the side. Oil pan. Well, hopefully this, I should put the camera higher. There we go. All right, we separated our uppers from our lowers and now we are gonna let this sit here for a bit, okay? While we're waiting for the lowers to empty out some of the oil into the oil pan, what we can do is take our foam seals. Now I do this, uh, only why not let them soak as much as possible, right? Take our foam seals, put them in a small cup, Covered them with 0 0.30 weight, which I think I forgot to mention. We need 0 0.30 weight for the lowers. All right. Cover them up, put some extra. We're going to be needing the extra. All right, dab them in there. Okay. And just let them sit until we need them later on. Now, I also want to say that for the 50 hour service, you could buy uh, foam rings in bulk. It comes out a lot cheaper. In fact, you could buy foam rings in bulk. You could buy the crush washers in bulk. It's a significant money saving, especially if you find these on discounts. I mean, it comes out to a good line, even a buck a foam ring, as opposed to buying individual package, which they go from 10 to 20 bucks with the wipers, right? So uh, you're gonna need to replace foam rings more than you're gonna need to replace wipers. I personally try and get at least three full 50 hours out of wipers. 
uh, prior to change, changing them. So just a tip, save you a couple of bucks because again, buying entire kits all the time gets uh, pretty pricey. So if you could find a good deal, especially on foam rings, and if you like servicing on your forks, this is the way to go. These things have been emptying out. Clean the bottoms just to make sure it doesn't make a mess all over the place. We won't be working on the upper for a while. Just clean the excess oil. And then what you can do since you're probably just gonna put them on the side, plug up the damper side with some paper towel because there is like a film of oil on the inside. And when you lay them down, that film of oil will come out and make a mess wherever you put them down. So just an FYI. So next we wanna take out the wipers. And the tool that I use to do that is this Ice Tools tire uh, lever. It's got a nice plastic coating on the outside it, I've, I've yet to have it leave a mark on my actual boots, right? So you could use a wrench, just be very careful that you don't scratch up your boot using a wrench, right? Just go underneath it. I'm not gonna try and save these. I'm gonna change them because they're already old enough. And I never get leverage on a table. Come on, come on, there we go. One, and... Two. There we go. And then we take out our wipers. These are actually really good. They're actually in really, really good shape. Our wipers, our foam rings. But this one, the one with the leak, and it, oh, there you go. There you go. I just grabbed this from the side. This is where the scratch was. Look at the wiper all the way around, and yet look how dirty this is over here. This is exactly where the scratch was. So, like I said, oil was coming out, dirt was absolutely getting in there, so I caught it in time. You definitely don't want dirt to go into your lowers because you will destroy the bushings and that's a bad thing. Next, we're gonna clean the inside of the lower boots. And I got a bit of a ritual when I do this. It involves a wooden dowel. I use a square wooden dowel, paper towels, and a rubber band, and alcohol. So what I do, is they take the dowel and I wrap it with a paper towel, just like that. Okay, and then I take a rubber band and I wrap it around until it's tight. Then I flake off or open up some of the paper towel to create like a mop, basically. So first what I do, take one side, cover the hole with your finger and put a generous amount of alcohol in there. Then shake it up and down. The whole idea is to break up all the oil first time around and heavy dirt. Okay, and then just spill it out. All right, what you can do Take another paper towel above here and see if any heavy particles came out. That looks pretty clean, actually. And then I'm gonna do it again. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. All right, empty it out. Okay, now spray a little bit. We're gonna take our dowel and put it inside and turn it opposite the way you wrapped it. So this way the parts, the paper parts that are just dangling just are able to make contact with everything inside. Put it all the way to the end to absorb everything at the bottom, all the oil and alcohol that's at the bottom, all right? Shake it around. Let's sit there and absorb. Okay, that's round one. This guy actually let him absorb all that oil. Take him out. Okay, take a look at it. Looking pretty clean already, but we are going to do that again. Oops, 
Should have taken another piece of paper towel. Put it around. Come on. It's not all that difficult. There we go. Make sure to give it some space over here, right? So he bunches up at the bottom. Wrap it. Secure it. Create a couple of flaps. Again, let's knock all in there. Let it absorb at the bottom. Okay. And we should be good on this side. So I'm not going to do the other side, or at least not on video, or at least repeat it. Uh, but you get the gist of it. Fill it up with alcohol. Well, put a good amount of alcohol in there when plugging the bottom hole. Shake it up and down to break out all the heavy oil. Spill it out. Put another good amount of alcohol in there, shake it up again, spill it out, and then go in there with the alcohol and the towels to wipe everything out and absorb everything that is in there. All right, I will be back after I finish the other side. We are done cleaning the inside and they look spotless. Now, what we want to do is inspect the bushings, right? You got two sets, one here and one around here. You want to make sure they're not worn, there's no scratches. Uh, you just want to make sure they are clean. And looking at these, Best off to put it against a lot of light, but I got that white background. It actually reflects. It's pretty good. And they are looking, they're actually in excellent shape. No issues whatsoever. So we're done with our lowers for now. I'm going to put it on the side because we are going to assemble it as the second half of the 50 hour service. This is technically part of the 50 hour service. We're going to assemble it later on after we finish up with the air spring and the damper. All right. So next, the air spring. Next, we have to take out the cap for the air spring in order to disassemble the air spring. For that, you will need a cassette tool and a ratchet, right? Now, this is on there pretty hard. I want to say 24 newton meters, give or take. I forget. I got to go look at that just to be sure. Grab a good grip on the opposite side. Put it on the table or the floor even better. And it's going to take a good amount of pressure. There we go. And crack it open. And this cap, there's a seal. We will change it later when we close it. For now, we're going to put it on the side. You can have your tokens underneath. On the bottom, we have a retaining clip. We need 90 degree angle. Well, you don't need 90 degree angle retaining clip pliers, but well, they make it a little bit easier, right? We'll just go in there, squish it together, and gently pull it out. Okay, now we remove the air spring. Now, to make my life easier removing the air spring, I had made that little tool that I mentioned in the tool section, right? It's nothing more than an M8 bolt with fender washers and a nut with a lock washer. I'm just gonna screw it in here. This just gives me more leverage. All right, just screw it in there. A few turns. See, instead of grabbing it here, this could be slippery. Sometimes I just grab it here and basically pull out. And, ooh, stinky, ooh. And that is our air spring with the C1 head. Now, let's clean, actually, well, technically I'll clean the tube to show you, but I am going to be changing the whole upper. And then we will be changing the seals on the C1 head. For now, what we're going to do is wipe off all this excess grease. Well, excess grease. Wipe off the grease in general. Okay. Let's toss this out. Now you would clean the inside of... Tube. You do that, put alcohol in there, grab a towel, punch it up into a ball with lots of sharp corners, or just punch it up into a ball, put it through, grab a dowel, look at the inside, Oop. a little bit more left in there, what you can do is turn this inside out to a clean part. Yeah, let's mock all. Look inside, and he is spotless. We'll put him on the side. Now we will change the seals. 
on, well, in this case, I'm gonna change the C1 head, but we're gonna change all the seals. Whether you have the original air spring or the new air spring, technically you could do this without a vise. What you will need is an eight millimeter Allen and a 12 millimeter wrench. Okay, and the way that works, the eight millimeter Allen goes up here, the wrench goes down here and turn. Now, I should have started with the seals, okay? So if you notice over here, before I continue with that, I have the seal kit, I opened it up, right? So this is the C1 specific seal kit. If you don't have the C1, you have the original seal kit or air, uh, air, uh, air spring, you're gonna pull out the debonair seal head and seals, and you're gonna pull out the wave washer only. The other two are the crush washers for underneath when we close it up later on, okay? So you'll be needing the wave washer and the debonair seal head and seals kit from the 200 hour service kit if you have the original air spring. But I don't, I got the C1. So basically, I just removed the bottom. <clears throat> what a waste, honestly. I, that, I want it. Just, I don't know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna put those guys on the side. Might as well use the new ones, All right? And take this guy out. Well, first, you know what? Let me just clean this guy real well. Even though he doesn't need him, but good practice, I guess. Okay, clean the shaft. And we're going to change the seal above. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is grab my SRAM butter. I'm going to put butter on the inside. All right. Because there is a quad ring inside. And we're going to take this guy. Now the only problem with doing that is, is you're going to get a lot of grease in there. But for rock shocks, that doesn't matter as much. And I could easily take care of that problem by grabbing a pick. Where's my pick? In this case, I'll just grab my retaining clip plier since it's accessible. And I'll go in here and clean out the rest. For the quad seal, I'm going to take out the existing quad seal. Be very careful, don't scratch the plastic. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Put them on the side so you don't mix them up. Good habit to clean on the inside, remove all the old grease. Chances are yours is going to be dirtier than mine anyway. Okay. Grab the new quad ring. Put grease on it. Now, when you put it on, make sure that it is not twisted. These things are very deceiving. They look like they're on right, but they're twisted. So, and there is a great example. It's twisted right there. Very, very deceiving. So be very careful now. Don't damage them. And let's see if we could untwist them. Like they're underneath. There we go. Oh. There we go. Nice try. So make sure that he is not twisted. You gotta be a million percent sure of that. Now we wanna take the new cap and we wanna put him back on, but before we put him back on, let's make sure the threads are clean of all grease because we will be needing Loctite, Loctite Red. I'm sure there's specific types of Loctite Red. I happen to have 277 handy, which is good for, well, wet and greasy scenarios. So just put a little bit, not much. Don't need to kill it, the stuff's strong. There we go. That's more than enough right there. Close that before he spills. Then we're gonna screw this guy on. Oops, wrong side. Screw this guy on. Now we gotta torque him down. Okay, so we're gonna need a torque wrench, 3.3 millimeters, your eight millimeter, and a crow's foot. 
close position and take them. There we go. There's one more seal on the air side. That's the air cap seal. And I, since they don't include it with, it's so dumb. I don't understand why they don't include it with the uh, C1 head. I mean, if you're going to change that, you can end up changing this. Why not, right? So I needed to grab this from the 200 hour service kit. This is nothing more than the seal that goes for the air cap on top. Put that on the side. Grab my pick. Oh. Take this guy out. So dumb. Clean this guy, make sure there's no dirt anywhere. Make sure the threads are clean as well. Put grease on the O-ring. Take the O-ring and slide him into his slot. There we go. That guy is done. Now we're ready to assemble the air spring side of the fork. So as mentioned, I'm gonna be changing out the upper assembly, right? For starters, we're gonna take some grease on our longest finger and we're gonna go inside and we're gonna put a quote as deep as you can with your finger of grease on the inside. Oh, I should have mentioned it actually. So again, the offset goes front, right? So whenever you're looking at the fork from the top down, the angle part is the front. So that means our air, springs, air spring is here, our damper is on the right side, air spring left damper right, okay? So I just put a nice coat of grease on the inside. Next, I put a good amount of grease on the air spring as well as over here. Okay, and on top, and then we're also going to do our shaft. Okay, come down, make sure we get on the inside. There we go. A little bit more over here. Now, before we tuck this guy all the way up, I'm going to grab. little bit of oil, 030 weight. And we're just gonna put it on top just like that. There we go, that's more than enough. About three milliliters, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna bring him all the way up, okay? And we're gonna take him, we're gonna roll him in. Watch your fingertips, cause it will snap in there. Make sure that he's all the way up. And there we go. Okay. All right. Then we're gonna grab our retaining ring with our retaining ring pliers. You have a round part and a flat part. Round part stays out, flat part goes inside. So we take him and make sure he is sitting in his seat. Okay. Don't let it fool you if it's not. And right now, one side of it is not. My hands are slippery, great. Okay, there we go. Now he's sitting inside fully. Make sure he is sitting inside fully. Okay. So this guy's all the way down. Next we close the top. Before we close the top, we want to put a little bit of that zero W30 or Maxima heavy oil in there. Three millimeters. On top of the air spring, it was only supposed to be about one millimeter. The amount I put is more than enough. Okay, this guy's always hard to suck in. Where's my three? Oh, wow. For real? Huh, right on the money. So I'm gonna take three millimeters of zero dot, uh, zero dot 30 or 
Maxima Heavy. And I'm just going to put it in the top, just like that, right? To cut a better little jar of soaking O-rings. Close this guy so he doesn't spill on you. All right, so now I got the cap. I had already put a little bit of grease, put a thin coat of grease. On well, I already put on the O-ring, so that was dumb actually putting it on the threads. What was I thinking? Real dumb. Now, I'm going to take this guy. Screw them on, always by hand first, always by hand. Righty tighty. Great. Then we have to torque him down. Put the cassette tool on the torque wrench, 28 newton meters. I think I mentioned 24 before. So many parts. All right, use table as leverage. Remember, always grab torque wrench from here. All right, never like this, never like that. Always from the end. And always a smooth round motion. Don't put your wrist in a weird position. Twenty-eight on the money. We're gonna put in just a little bit of air. In order to keep this guy from sucking up. We don't need much air. 20 PSI max, I would say, would do it. There we go. 21, sustained. Not moving anywhere. We are good. Our air spring is done. Next, we work on the damper. Now for the damper. So, one, don't be intimidated by this, guys. This is actually a very easy damper to work on. RockShox did an outstanding job with the Charger 2 2.1s to make it as simple as possible for us to keep them, you know, up to date, keep them nice and fresh, all right? For starters, we're going to double check that both our low speed compression and our high speed compression are fully open, okay? So counterclockwise, both knobs, we already did it before. To take out the knob, two millimeter Allen, okay? Just unscrew it, hold it down with your thumb, Remove the whole mechanism one shot, put it on the side. We will clean all this later. Take out the damper shaft, cassette tool again, put it inside, use table as leverage, put it in the open position. It's going to be a bit stiff because again, these are down 24, 28 newton meters. There we go. And And we take out the damper to clean the upper tube, same as before. Spray it down with alcohol, clean the threads above first. Make sure we don't suck any dirt down there. And then grab a cloth, bunch it up. Grab a dowel, stick it down there. And, well, it's clean. Then we're going to grab the towel, clean the outside of the damper itself. And done. Now we open up the damper. So I thought I had a bit of an issue. I thought I might have potentially had a leak on top of my damper body. thought there might have been signs of oil in there. Uh, and I cleaned it up real well basically compress it, squeeze the bladder, right? This will give you a good idea if there is a leak or not. If there is a leak, you'll see oil coming out of any sealed area. So here, 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 or up here, basically, right? And I just, no matter what I do, I see absolutely nothing coming out. So I will better test it when we go through the bleed process, but there is a seal up here. It can be blown. Unfortunately, Rock Shocks doesn't seal. I mean, inside there's a seal up here. Rock Shocks doesn't resell that seal, which is a bit of an issue, and occasionally they can't go on you. Next, what we will do is take out the oil. Two ways to take out the oil in this thing. One, open up the rebound head, which we're gonna have to do anyway to change it, right? Now, to do that, you would put it in a vise, flat jaws, 
right? If you notice over here, there's a flat section on one side, there's a flat section on the other side, and you would just slip it in here and use a wrench to remove it. Or you can do that, but in the past, what's happened to me once was as I opened it and removed the entire shaft and I removed the upper half, the upper tube, it slipped out of my hands and oil fell all over the place, right? So to avoid that, what you can do is since we have to take out the bleed screw anyway, take a T10, take out the bleed screw. Why a T10, honestly? Why, I, I, it, who makes these decisions? So take a T10, take it out. I thought this was magnetic. Apparently it's not magnetic. Okay. And then grab a little jar, turn it upside down and just slowly take out your oil. Boy, that oil's in good shape, right? So it's a little bit more controlled, a little bit cleaner to do. Right? Nothing's wrong with doing it the other way, but if you do make a mistake, you could end up spilling it all over the place without realizing it, right? So this way, it just makes it a little bit cleaner. You don't have to take out all the oil. That's good enough for now. Okay, before we continue, make sure you have your charger seal head kit from your 200 hour service. Put it on the side, right? So again, RockShox made it easy for us. Flat soft jaws, all that's needed in order to take off the seal head, right? That and a 23 millimeter wrench. So we're gonna take the flat sections of the shaft body, all right? We're gonna put on our soft jaw. And then we're just gonna take our 23 millimeter and uh, counterclockwise. All right. And we are good. Let's take this guy, remove some of that oil. All right, we'll take this guy, and then we will grab our oil and empty him out completely. All right, just squeeze on the bladder a few times to get everything from the top down. Let him sit there for a bit so he can empty out and we will be back. So I emptied out the oil and again, don't dump the oils in the toilet. Don't dump them in the sink. Don't dump them outside. Don't dump them in a sewer. Dispose of them appropriately, folks, man. I mean, this stuff is really not good for the environment, especially if it gets in waterways, all right? Give it to your local bike shop. I mean, these guys do it all the time. Go to an auto zone. I mean, go to a mechanic shop. Just find somebody to dispose of all these oils appropriately. So like this one, it's gone. This week, it's gone. So uh, now you have an option. You could take alcohol spray it inside to try and clean out the inside. I personally don't do that. The only reason I don't do that is I never feel comfortable with the fact knowing that there's always a possibility that the alcohol won't completely evaporate and there will be some remnants of alcohol within the shim stack, which for me, uh, I mean, alcohol and oil just don't mix, right? It's a very bad thing. So I maintain my forks regularly so I don't really worry about it. You can try it, put alcohol in there, rinse it out, try and dump it out, let it sit there and evaporate uh, for a while. But again, it's really hard to, anything that gets past the shim stack at this point, it'll be hard to actually remove it, right? So I would just personally skip that step. At the end, we just clean the threads to make sure we are good to go. Okay, so that's that part. So then we have the shaft, you stay there. Then we have the shaft, right? For the shaft, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take off the seal head, okay? Now let's clean the shaft well. Then we're gonna grab the new seal head from the kit. Oh. Actually, we'll grab all three pieces. So we have our new glide ring our seal for the tops. Oops, I just hit the camera with my head. And our seal head, okay? To put the seal head in, we're gonna take a little bit of grease 
and we're going to put it on the inside. Okay, just like that. Cool. Let's grease on the side. Now, when we put the seal head back in, we want to put them in with the threads facing the glide ring over here. All right. Just like that. Now we have to clean all that grease from down there. From inside the threads. Make life easier. Grab a pick. Scoop it out. Clean it. And then grab some towel. Put it in there. Twist it around a bunch of times. And we are good with one more shot. Cool. Then we change our glide ring. Man, I just hit my thing again. Okay. Split ring. Put them out. Toss them on the side. Put the new one in. Chances are, oops. There we go. And this guy's ready to be put back together. Now we fill it up again with oil. We have two options. We could either put it in the vise and fill it up now and then close the shaft, right? Or what you can do is put in the shaft, close it all up, and then fill it up via the bleed port and the syringe, which we're gonna use anyway, right? The differences being, this one's gonna be quicker as far as filling it up. Bleeding is also gonna be a little bit quicker doing it this way, but again, there's always a chance that you can make a bit of a mess. So if you're in an environment where, you know, you don't mind making a mess or it's really easy to clean up, then just go ahead and do it this way. If you're in an environment that, you know, you'd like to have more control as far as oil, potential oil spillage, then do it the other way. Again, just close this up, work it down, uh, and then open a bleed port and put in the syringe, fill the syringe without the, the plunger, and essentially you're just gonna pull the shaft in and out until it fully fills up the damper body, and then you use the syringe with the plunger in order to create vacuum so you could bleed. All right, I have a video out there showing that, so uh, I'll probably make another one when I do a 2.0, uh, 2.1 again. Um, and show you the other way. But for this one, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put it in the vise. We're gonna grab our three weight oil. All right, be careful, fill it up. Try not to overfill it. There we go, nearly there, fill it to the top. Boom, good enough. The rest we're going to bleed out anyway. What you can do is squeeze the bladder in order to get oil out or air out from underneath now. This will just save us a bit <clears throat> of time during the bleed process. All right. Hmm. I'm sure there's more. I know there's more. See how much further down the oil went? Try and squeeze the bladder everywhere, up and down, stroke them. Okay, the rest we're probably just gonna have to do it. Well, we're definitely gonna have to bleed it with the syringe. Okay. Now, I'm going to fill it to the top. Okay, that's to the top. And what we can do, should have put a towel around it really, but let's wipe out any air bubbles from the top. That'll help us out. See, I should have put a towel around. Maybe. Might look a little bit cleaner for myself. A little too late now, but still help a bit. 
All right. There we go, good enough for now. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our tamper, we're gonna put it in, actually, what am I doing? Take this guy all the way down, we're gonna put him in, and we're gonna screw him shut. By hand first, always by hand. Make sure this guy's tight. Take our wrench. Okay, and then torque wrench, crow's foot, 90 degree angle, 5.1 newton meters. Oop, 5.3, not too far off. I was looking at the camera actually. All right, so we filled it up for now. Next up, the bleed. To bleed the damper. So we already made sure that our rebound was set to the fully open position to test it, hold the shaft, grab the rebound knob, put it in, turn it counterclockwise, should be at the end. We are good to go. So we're fully open, okay? So now you could bleed this fully vertical or sideways like this on an angle at least. I'm gonna do it on an angle because it's easier to put the whole thing in frame in the camera. All right, so I'm gonna get new magnets for that thing. So let's close this guy up. You don't have to put too much pressure on him. Okay, just make sure he's sitting there, he's in place, okay? Now, I'm gonna use my tool. This helps me with the bleed, it just gives me more leverage. All right. Next, what we're gonna do is, we are gonna take out the new bleed screw Make sure that, oops, some oil's coming out. That's a pretty good sign. Uh, make sure that the seal came with it. Just clean some of that before it spills all over the place. Then we're gonna take our syringe, make sure the seal is on the syringe. All right, it's a rock shock syringe, SRAM syringe. Yeah, the SRAM syringe, rock shock, like the brake syringe, same threads. So for SRAM brakes, and we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna fill him up with oil. Go about halfway, you shouldn't need more than that. That is way more than enough. And we're gonna take him, and we're gonna put him in here. Again, what I should have done, what I'm gonna do now, screw him down all the way. Let's just put a little bit of towel over here. collect any oil that might spill out and get in the hole. There we go, am I in frame? Yes, I am in frame. Okay, so take this guy, put him on the side before we make a mess. Now what we're gonna be doing is compressing the shaft in and out, trying to displace any air that is sitting inside the damper. Okay, and then we're gonna be compressing the plunger in order to create suction coming out. As you can see, there's air bubbles coming out or hopefully you can see that, right? So then again, just keep on going back and forth. See what I mean? That's what we want is suction. So if you notice when I depress the plunger, I'm creating pressure on this side, right? Now this is a good time to check if you have any kind of leaks, like I thought I might have had. So you do, make sure you clean all film of oil or any signs of oil from your hands, touching this, all right? Apply pressure, bring this guy down, expand the bladder, if there was an oil leak, you would absolutely see it now because this is the most amount of pressure that that bladder will see. Even when riding, it won't see pressure like that, nowhere near that kind of pressure. And I see zero, zero leak, so that top part's good. All right, and we just keep on going back and forth. See, there's more bubbles. 
Now this could take a while. You want to remove every bubble. You don't want any of those small little bubbles in there, right? The more you remove, the better it will perform. The slightest bubbles in there will create a froth, which will only degrade the performance. All right. So, another thing we could do, charge the damper again and squeeze on it. In order to, see what I mean? If it's vertical, the air will come out quicker. But again, you could do it this way, there's nothing wrong, it just takes a little bit longer. Um, Let's create suction, there's a vacuum. Let those air bubbles come up. Okay. Fill it up. Hold it down, compress, vacuum it up. There you go. All right, hold it down, compress, vacuum it up. Then when you get to a point, where you're doing it five, six, seven times and you don't see a sign of a bubble, then you're 99.99% sure you are done. All right. Compress all the way down. Massage the bladder. Let anything escape, whatever could escape. Oh, see that? That was from massaging the bladder. That again. Press the syringe, expand the bladder, massage it, try and force out any air through the shims. Remember everything has to be in the open position for this to work, right? Which we already know we did. Okay. Down. Oh, that's a good sign there. It's a really good sign. Try that again with the bladder. Expand it, massage it. Squeeze it really good, create pressure. Let's see if we can get any of the bubbles come out. Create suction with the vacuum. Wow, oh, I don't see a thing. That's a really good sign. I think I'm actually bled. Do it a couple of more times. 
the camera overheated just when I pretty much had fully bled the damper. So now we close it up. In order to do that, we need to make sure the shaft is completely extended all the way. And then what we're going to do is pressurize the system by pressing down on the syringe, expanding the bladder, not touching it, and letting it retract on its own naturally to a resting position. Then what we're going to do, prep your bleed screw. We're going to take out the syringe. So oil is probably going to come out. All right. And then we're going to take our bleed screw and close up the port. Tighten it down, finger tight. And we are good. So now let's clean up some of the oil. Now we're going to do is test and make sure we hear no squishy noises. I mean, you will hear, you know, movement of fluid going through shims, but there should be no like air, like, like suction noises basically, right? So one more thing we're going to test. We're going to take our compression knob. We're going to put it on the fully closed position. So clockwise all the way, two clicks in this case. And the shaft should not move. If it moves no more than a couple of millimeters, this one is not going anywhere. Nowhere at all. All right, so you know that's good. Ultimately, what we can do also is Take off our little tool over here. Super handy, guys. Only cost you a couple of bucks to make. Test our rebound. Oops, hold on to the shaft. Again, clockwise. All right, fully clockwise, this fully slow position. Shouldn't hear any crazy noises pulling them in and out. All right, and it should be hard to pull out. So that was real hard to pull out. So that means we are good there. Turn them all the way counterclockwise to the fully open position. So once again, let me just test fully clockwise. It's not going anywhere. Nowhere. We are fully bled. Wipe them down. And he is ready to put back into the upper body. Actually, before we do that, might as well get this guy on the way. On the top over here, we have a seal. I nearly forgot about him. Take him out. There's a replacement seal. Put a little grease on it. Slide him through. Put him on the bottom because he doesn't expand as much as you would if you put him on top. And I'm free. Yes, I am. And done. Now he's ready. Let's put the damper into the upper assembly. It's real simple to do. Slide it in there. Grab our cassette tool. Go backwards first, counterclockwise first. You hear the click. And, nope, thought I had it there. And, oh. Oh, why is it not clicking? Always by hand first, folks, and this is the reason. Why is this not going in? There we go. There we got it. Okay. It starts getting a little bit hard. Use the ratchet until we go down all the way. And then back to our torque wrench. 28 newton meters. All right. Again, make sure the torque wrench is straight. Get the teeth in there. 
sure you're straight, grab them by the butt end. And do not put your arm in a real, in an odd angle. There we go, 28.3. Good stuff. As for the knobs, let's give them a good cleaning. Get any debris, dust, particles, so it doesn't make all sorts of grindy noises. All right. Like that, should be clean. Same with the low speed compression knob. Clean it real well. Alright, then take a little piece of speed compression knob and basically try and start them up. You could start them up any which way you want. So essentially whatever is comfortable for you visually. So for instance, we want the lock position, the fully open position to be like this. Actually, yeah, like that. And then we want to be able to move the dials enough where we won't interfere with the crown, especially on this side, right? So that's fully open and that's fully closed. So fully open position. We know that this is fully open, so we might as well start them from even with the charger as far as the lettering. Oops, damn, I thought I was in frame. And then we take our two millimeter, do them by hand first. And then just finger tight. Yep, good enough. If he starts moving them, then you've got more than enough. And our damper is done. Next, we finish it up. All right, let's take this thing home. So we have our wipers from the kit. We have our foam rings that have been soaking in oil for since the beginning of this thing just about and we're going to need some grease. So the first thing we're going to do is what I do is uh, I take off these guys just in case I damaged them by mistake. Put them on the side. Take a thin coat of grease. Put them on the outside. Nothing too crazy over here, just a thin coat. Helps it go in easier and it helps it come out easier later on when you do your 50 hour. Okay. So, careful with this guy. These guys are nice and saturated. Let's take one. We're going to put them in. Make sure he's perfectly flat. Make sure he's not twisted. Then, we're going to take little tool over here. Make sure it matches your stanchion width. It's a 35 millimeter stanchions, 35 millimeter wiper. You need the 35 millimeter tool. I'm gonna put this guy in. And let's see if we can do them by hand. Usually with rock shocks, you can do them by hand. And what you're looking for is for it to be perfectly flat. So I'm not perfectly flat yet. So what I'm gonna do is give him a little tap. A little bit more. There we go. Ah, he's nice and flat. Now we're going to do the other side. Again, make sure he's not twisted. Make sure he's nice and flat and fully seated. Grab our tool. Squish him in. Ooh, a little bit more. Oh yeah, we are good. Cool. Let's take care of this guy before we spill him. Put him on the side for now, right? Done with those guys. Now what I do is I like filling up the entire 
so these wipers are concave and I like pretty much even evening it out with grease. So I'm not afraid to put some grease on here. Try not to get grease outside, make sure it's like all inside. Just makes it easier for you to clean up later. Just like that. If you don't do your 50 hours regularly, then I'd probably advise put a little bit more grease to be honest. But you're better off doing your regular 50 hours. Servicing forks and shocks is the best thing you could do for them in order for you to enjoy them the most. And these days they're making it easier for people to do it, which is a great thing, especially rock shocks. I'll give you guys kudos for that one big time. Now we are ready to put them into the upper. Before we put them together, what we're gonna do in order to make our lives easier is clean the back part best you can now because once you put the bottom with the top, combine them, it's gonna be real hard to get back here and clean the grease and a lot of gunk's gonna build up over here. So this is gonna be your best opportunity to do so. Any excess grease, just get rid of it. Just like that. There you go. This side you could get to it all the time. So not an issue. The back part's difficult. Now, in your case, you will also be changing your sag ring. I won't be doing that. I got a new one with the upper anyway, right? So what I do next is, well, first, let's make sure the spring has no negative pressure. Negative pressure means it'll push or pick up the air spring, push it down, no movement at all, right? We are totally perfect there. So I don't like putting on the retaining rings now. I put them on after because there's always a chance to pinch them and damage them when combining the lower with the upper. So I just put them on the upper stanchions first, right? So. Remember, crown facing forward, crown facing forward, right? So, or offset facing forward, crown facing forward. Uh, looking at it this way, damper side, air side, damper side, air side. So we're gonna put it in. You can do so you can see better is flip it, right? So I'm gonna take one side, tuck them in, and then take the other side and just roll it in there. And there we go. Make sure it hasn't folded. Nope, we're good. Should be able to bring them in. Cool. There we go. Now we can put our, or you could do an hour later, but since I'm here, put our little rings in. Okay. Yeah. Snap in. Watch, make sure he snaps in the back. Be very careful if you're using, better off using a plastic. This one's not wanting to snap in for some reason. There we go, he just snapped in. Actually, this guy didn't snap in either. There we go. Oop, come on, get in there. Mm -hmm. Come on, dummy, stop being stubborn. There we go. Done. Now we fill it up with oil. Before we fill up the lowers with oil, Let's change out and prep. Let's change out our crush washers and prep our bolts. Okay, this guy could be a little bit tricky sometimes. Try and get underneath him with a pick. I swear these things. There we go. Once he comes loose, grab him with a plier evenly and I don't nearly hedge it. Mm. Mm. There. Mm. All right. Just there we go. Threads clean the underneath in case there's some kind of dirt in there. Then we just take our new crush washer, fit him in. This guy here is a regular washer. Mess, a seal type washer. 
they don't give us a replacement. Just clean him good and put them all on the side. So now we have to put 10 millimeters of 0W30 or Maxima Plush Light, which is the new one that's replacing the 0W30. Same thing basically, right? Make sure that you have space between the boot and the shaft on the inside. This one I have space, this one I don't. So I need to bring this guy a little bit further down. Now I have space. All right. So we're going to grab some of our leftover oil. Take our syringe, fill them up. This is a 10 millimeter syringe. Fill them up 10 millimeters. Right there. Start with the damper side. Since I'm here, put them in, just inject them in there. All right. Down. Great. Oh man, did it break? Oh, come on. It did break. Perfect, my luck. Let's see if I can squeeze them in there. All right. Oh. <laughs> well, I gotta go get another 10 millimeter syringe. I'll be back. And I am back with a new 10 millimeter syringe, which actually seems to work much better than the old one anyway. Bring it up, 10 millimeters right there. And let's do the air side. Pour it in. Mm. All right. Mm. A little excess now since it's easier. Let's go inside. All right, now let's compress them a bit. Now we put the bolts on. Bolt with the hole in it. The larger bolt goes on the rebound side. The other bolt goes on the air side, right? Basically compress these guys here until they sort of touch. So this guy's touching, they're both touching in this case. If they're offset, just grab a pick and gently put them into place, right? So in this case, always by hand first on the rebound side, I'm gonna grab the rebound bolt, put it in. And on the air side, I'm gonna grab the air side bolt, put that in always by hand. All right, so then we'll grab our ratchet. Oop. We're gonna torque them down so don't over twist them. All right, and as far as torque, get your torque wrench, 7.3 Newton meters. So, put them in. Yeah. There we go, 7.36 on that side. And get a good grip on this guy. 7.38 on that side. Now, we grab our rebound knob. Let's turn this guy over. We know we're in the fully open, we should be in the fully open position. Yes, we are. Make this guy easy to access. So you could either do them here or do them like that. I'm gonna do it like that. Don't over tighten this guy, finger tight. Literally just finger tight. Make sure it works. There we go. And that part's done. Next we spray down, wipe off, spray them down with alcohol. Wipe off any excess grease, oil, so it doesn't get stuck all over the place on your first ride. And there goes that one. There you have it, folks. You just completely serviced your RockShox Pike fork. The only thing left is to put your settings, your rebound settings, your low speed compression settings, and your air settings and make sure to put the air cap. I still need to do a couple of things over here because I changed out my upper uh, body, right? I need to, basically I need to cut the top, 
I need to change out the race or add the race in, that's going to be a separate video. Again, very easy job, folks. Highly recommend you do it regularly. Keep up with the service. RockShox made it where it's not all that expensive and very easy to do, and you barely need any fancy tools. A lot of the tools needed for this, I bet you most of you already have somewhere hiding around. When it comes to chips on the stanchion, again, where is it? So it doesn't look like much, but this is in a really bad spot. I'd say that's about an inch and a half, very deep. Is it fixable? Yes, it is fixable, but considering the area that it's in, it'll be very hard to get a real smooth finish all the way around in order for oil not to leak out in this case, because it's constantly going to be rubbed on, constantly, constantly, nonstop every time you ride. This is where your shock's going to ride the most in this area, right? So I'm going to probably make a video as far as how to fix something like this. But right now, like I said, I found this for a really, really, really good price. So I just jumped right on it because it was a significant discount, to say the least. So if you need to change yours, it's very easy to change out, okay? As far as answering some people's questions, uh, there was, I hadn't put out a video in a while. People were like, yeah, hey, you're gonna keep on making videos? Absolutely. And I plan on getting back into it more and more as every week goes by. The last uh, couple of months, we've been hit by some really unexpected issues that we've been dealing with. And finally, things are starting to settle and things are getting slowly back to normal. So that gives me a little bit more freedom and time in order to be able to do stuff like this, which I absolutely love to do, okay? I have a lot more coming. I mean, I got a Charger 3 waiting to be put together. I got a Float X, I got droppers. I, there's a bunch of stuff that I need to get to. I'm way behind and I will get to them, folks. So until then, please press the like button if you like the video, it helps out the channel. Press the subscribe button if you want to see more videos. Click the bell button, bing, 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 if you want to get reminded when new videos come out, all right? So until then, hope all is well with everyone, and talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good one.